Hi everyone, I'm Mark Ames. Welcome to Five of the Frontline, produced by AIHA. This week we're examining indoor air quality and urban wildfires and the threat they pose to homeowners. Our guest is Dawn Bolsted Johnson. Dawn is the author of Exposed, Carcinogenic Exposures on the Fire Ground and 11 Work Practices to Minimize the Risk. She's been studying the after fire environment from the industrial hygienist perspective for more than 25 years. She's a certified industrial hygienist, a certified safety professional, an AIHA fellow, and holds a master's degree in public health. Welcome to the show, Don. Thank Thanks for having me. Don, lately we've been seeing raging wildland fires in the news. Those are definitely important, no question, but there's another equally terrifying threat to homeowners everywhere in the nation, and many probably don't even know about it. What can you tell us about indoor air quality and urban wildfires? Why is this such a problem, and what can homeowners do to protect themselves? Well, that's a big topic, but we're gonna get right to it. Uh, the main thing that homeowners need to realize is that the home's not the same after the fire has blown through the neighborhood. And a lot of people think, wow, my home survived this, this wild uh, firestorm, the urban wildfire that ate up my neighborhood, but somehow by some grace, my house survived. And they're so excited to get back in their house, but it's actually uh, what they think is a blessing. It actually ends up to be somewhat of a curse and unexpected curse um, because of the particulate that has just blown through their home and infiltrated their home every nook and cranny and kind of remains in their home uh, until it's cleaned properly. And what that entails is a lot of HEPA filtration and, and a lot of things that industrial hygienists deal with on a regular basis. There was a guy that uh, one of the first homes that I inspected and he was just thrilled that his house had survived a Paradise California fire. And when he entered, he and his family couldn't stay there because they couldn't breathe. Um, the, the contaminant level was so high because uh, he had neighbors, all the neighbors' homes were burned, all that plastic load. Um, the neighbors had home businesses that involved pesticides that became, you know, went up in smoke, so to speak, and, and got into his house. And so when they entered, they couldn't breathe and they had to leave. They had to go find another house. So uh, his wife grabbed her wedding dress and they moved out. And after I did the inspection of their house, I said, I think you better just look at your pictures of your wedding and get rid of the wedding dress because now you're bringing the contamination with you to wherever you're staying next. The contamination is, um, is somewhat unique. Uh, it's not Smokey the Bear fire where you're just looking for soot, char, and ash. There's a lot of um, synthetic materials. Look at the plastic load at your home. You probably have about two tons of plastic in your house, especially if you have toddlers. That goes up in smoke. The um, toxicity from burning plastic is, as you can imagine, off the charts. We probably haven't identified everything that's coming off the plastic. So as homeowners, what you can do to protect yourself in the after fire environment, if your home does survive, is get the right person, get the right team together to inspect your home, to do a, an appropriate uh, indoor air quality assessment. From an industrial hygiene perspective, you're gonna be looking at health effects, as well as uh, surface contamination, what's gotten in wall cavities. A lot of um, indoor air quality specialists don't even look at that. Uh, they're just looking for soot, char, and ash. And I think that's what needs to change. And it starts with the homeowner requesting more information on what's in their house, what's gotten into the insulation in the attic, what's gotten into the insulation in the wall cavity. Those kinds of things are just not typically inspected by your traditional indoor air quality specialist who mainly focuses on mold. That's um, their kind of bag. Industrial hygienists bring much more to the table. Um, we anticipate, recognize, evaluate, and control hazards in the workplace, and we can easily apply that same toolbox to hazards in your home following a fire, even a house fire that your house caught on fire by some misfortune, and you want to, if you're getting sick when you move back in, call an industrial hygienist, and you can find them easily at the AIHA consultants listing. Just Google AIHA consultants and it should bring you right to that tab and you can find an industrial hygienist in your community to help you through solve these problems and identify what is making me sick in my house. 
Don, thank you so much. That is super important information. That is all the time we have today. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And thanks to everyone for joining us. This has been Five on the Front Line. I'm Mark Ames. We'll see you next week.